All right, so welcome to Money Mondays. Uh, this is supposed to be an Instagram live event, but Instagram, I guess, decided to shut down today for some reason. But the show must go on, right? Technology. You can't live yes. with it, can't live without it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's the first rule of entrepreneurship. You have to be ready to pivot. Um, but I guess that's not new to an ER physician, right, and a surgeon. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're yeah. used to doing that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So in brief introduction, I'm Dr. Derek Burgess. I'm host of Time Out with the Sports Doctor podcast. And we have Dr. Ronnie Shalev with us, who is um, co-owner, founder and co-owner of Shawan Properties. And she'll give us a brief introduction. Um, but don't forget, she is also a board certified ER physician, as I mentioned earlier. So give us a brief introduction of how you went from ER doc to uh, real estate owner and investor. Yeah. So people ask me like, how, why did you leave? You know, you're, you're an ER doctor, you're board certified, you're already established in your career. Um, you're making a ton of money. Why did you leave? Well, I'll never forget it. There was a shift um, where I was alone. Uh, it was around 10 PM. I was the only doctor they had taken away my scribe. They had taken away my physician assistant, my mid-level. It was just me. And I was managing two stroke patients at the same time. I had an asthmatic. I had someone having a heart attack. I had a full waiting room where, like, there wasn't an empty chair. And you could just see, like, the frustration of everybody waiting for me. And then I had ambulances lined out the door waiting to get checked in. I was like, oh my God, when is my relief coming? You know, I looked at my clock and it was, it was eight more hours. Wow. And, and, you know, I was like, I can't, I, the stress, just the pressure is, was insane. Um, and I did what I'd been doing for the previous 10 years. You know, I, I put my head down and I took care of all those patients. I didn't eat, drink or pee. I just functioned as best I could with all of that stress. Because you know what, the administrators had cut my hours, they had cut all the physician hours, they said, Oh, you know, you don't need so many doctors, and we're trying to save money. And we're, you know, you got to see them faster. Um, so they were dictating to me what you know, I had to do. And, and basically, you know, I came home that day and I just collapsed on the bed in my scrubs. And my family was like, Hey, Hey, you know, let's go, let's go out. Let's go, let's go to the park. And, and I was, I mean, I had, I felt like I was hit by a car or a truck. Uh, my body hurt. I just could not function. And, you know, I thought to myself, is this it? This is me reaching my destination, my professional, like professionally accomplished, like this is it, like there has to be something different. I mean, this just can't be me for the next 20 years. Like what else? But then, you know, then I went into like, well, what am I supposed to do? This right. is what people do. This is what I signed up. Like, and, and kind of that's where at that time someone reached out to me um, about real estate. And that's kind of where my, my journey began. It began out of frustration for my current situation. So as you mentioned, a, a childhood dream fulfilled as a doctor, but frustrated. Um, but what limiting beliefs did you have to be able to actually say, hey, I'm a doctor, but I can also be an entrepreneur? Did you run into any limiting beliefs in the beginning? Oh, for sure. You know, they somehow brainwash us and say, we're doctors, we're scientists, you know, we take care of patients, we don't know business. Right. Um, don't worry about the money, we'll take care of everything. You don't want to learn about the, the medical side, the business side. Um, so that was my limiting belief. Yeah. You know, like, because that's what I've been told. Like, I'm just a doctor, I'm just a doctor, just take care of the patients and they'll take care of the rest. And, and that's where I decided to say, no, I'm not just a doctor. <laughs> I've done some amazing things. Absolutely. I could learn, I could learn real estate. Like it's not as complicated as taking care of patients. However, 
getting into real estate can be a daunting task when you have zero knowledge, right? And right. that's why we really have, that's why we're having this segment to be able to debunk some of the myths or debunk some of the, the fears that you might have about real estate investing or about investing in general, or maybe the uh, odd relationship that you have with money. Uh, is there a fear for money? You know, is there a fear of losing money? Um, so let's, let's speak of losing money. So now, you know, with the economy, everything's high. You know, I don't know if we've technically entered a recession yet, but inflation is definitely high. So talk mm -hmm. to us about recession and why it's better to invest than to, you know, Robert Kiyosaki says savers are losers. So explain to us what that <laughs> means, especially during a time when inflation is high. Yeah. So I was trained in my head growing up. It was, it was, you're going to get a nice paying job. You're going to put 30% away in savings. You're going to pay off all your debt. You're going to buy your house and you're going to be set. Right. Your house um, is going to be but, a, an asset for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not right. Like once you start yeah. reading Robert Kiyosaki, your house is not an asset. It's a liability. Um, and if you're having, if you have $300,000 in the bank that you've saved up because you've been so good, it's losing at 9%. It's losing money. That's never happened before. You know, the recession, I mean, the, this is the highest inflation rate in decades. So right now, if you're a saver, you are, you're doing something more risky than putting it into something that um, either cash flows or goes up in value or just making your money work for you. So if you start thinking that way, like, whoa, that's more risky than putting it into investment, then your kind of whole world opens up. Yeah. Similar to what you said, I was told to, you know, be thrifty, to save, as long as you're saving your money, as eventually you will be able to have enough wealth or whatever to retire. You know, that was always the goal mm -hmm. to retire. When do you want to retire? You know, that age, 65, 70, right. 75, you know, that mythical age. Uh, but <laughs> as we know now with inflation and you're gaining point whatever percent, not even near a half percent on your savings, you're losing big time. Um, so talk to us about, you know, real estate with inflation. How does real estate, how does that still make sense uh, with inflation being high? Well, you know, specifically my niche is apartments and actually apartments are a great hedge against inflation. Why is that? Well, every year the tenants have to renew their lease. Right. And every year the rents are bumped up. I mean, you never say, you never hear like a full apartment complex. Oh, we're going to give you a $200 discount. No, the rents go up. So they actually keep up with inflation. So the income that's coming in keeps up with inflation as most of more than any other type of uh, real estate, because in some of these other ones, like uh, commercial real estate, they're signing five, 10 year leases and triple net leasing. They're signing 20 year clients. So in the end, you know, in the in the past, you would say, oh, it's a tw it's this client that's a Walgreens, and they're going to pay for twenty years. I never have to worry about the tenant. So right. people used to it say, oh my god, that's so safe, so safe. Right. But but now it's not safe because you can't raise those rents. You're not keeping up with the market, and you're not keeping up with inflation. So it's interesting what was considered safe 10, 15 years ago is not safe anymore. Yeah, that's about so let's, the pivoting, the pivoting sure. that we're talking. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So you mentioned apartment. So you're not talking about single units or duplexes. We're talking when you're driving down the interstate and you see these big apartment communities. So talk to us mm -hmm. about the difference between um, kind of single family or um, investing from a residential side versus commercial and multifamily. Talk to us about that. Yeah. So when you're buying a single family home, the value of the home is based on next door neighbor. Where did Mr. Jones sell his house? Oh, he's, he costs 250000 Okay, great. Like I'm going to buy it at two fifty five. That sounds like about right. Or I'm going to sell mine for two sixty in two years. It went up, right? Commercial is totally different. Commercial is an actual operating business. You're buying a business. It's cash flowing. You're buying a business that has tenants that are paying rent. 
that the, there's, a, there's employees involved. There's a lot of different people involved in the whole thing. And you have expenses, you have income, you're buying 200 units maybe, you know, and you have economies of scale. If I have a single family home and my tenant moves out and I have to find a new tenant, it can sit empty for three, four weeks, maybe a month, maybe two months. That is stressful because you're having to pocket that money and, and really pay out of pocket for the mortgage for the taxes. And if it's a 200 unit apartment complex and 20 people move out, it's, it's not that stressful because you have economies of scale. You have um, the cushion of the other tenants uh, helping with that cash flow and that net operating income. Okay, so someone submitted a question about how much money do you have to have to get started with real estate? And I know that's kind of a, a broad question, but just talk, talk to us about some of the things you might need up front to start investing. Yeah, so I mean, really, you can invest in real estate with as little as $1,000, but not in um, syndications. Right. So if yeah. you, right, if you want to do single family home, if you want to house hack, if you want to do a fix and flip, if you want to do something with creative financing, there's so many ways. There's, there's owner um, financing. There's, there's so many ways to be creative and to start in real estate. Um, so you don't have to have a lot of money to start, but you have to have 50 to a hundred thousand dollars to get access to institutional size deals like the ones that I help investors invest in. So these are $30, $40 million properties. As a single John Smith, you're not gonna have that money to go buy an apartment complex. But when you are joining forces with another 100 investors, you can tackle those type of um, large commercial assets and, and buy them and own them. And the larger they are, the um, the less risk they, there is because there's that economies of scale. All right, so talk to us about the different types of investments. I mean, tell us what a sophisticated investor means or an okay, accredited so, investor. Yeah, these are SEC guide, SEC terminology. Um, and so accredited investor is the investors that have a million dollars of net worth or they're making $200,000 as a salary, as a single person, or $300,000 um, as a married couple. Once you have that status as of accredited investor, you have so many deals that are open to you that you can invest in. And it used to be that um, people could only invest if they were accredited in these type of deals. But they became a little bit more lenient and um, they are allowing people that are sophisticated investors to invest. Now, sophisticated investor is you don't have the money. You don't have as much money as someone with a credit. And you might not make as much salary. You might not have enough um, in savings, but you're, you're smart and you've been educated. So you're sophisticated. Um, someone that's educated about how the process works. The government does not want you investing in deals that, you know, you could lose all your money. You know, they, they, they're trying to protect you. Um, so they don't want people that don't have the funds to put them in these long-term investments. Now, it's really rare to lose all your money, but like any investment, you can lose it. You can. It's less risky, I think, than putting money into the stock market um, and losing it that way. Uh, but there is risk and, um, and that's why it's important to be educated and to learn as much as you can about it. Sure, sure. So talk to us about um, kind of, you mentioned some of the risk, but talk to us about some of the benefits, especially some of the tax benefits of investing in real estate or owning real estate. Yeah, so if you own, like a dividend in a stock, every time the company gives you a dividend, you're paying taxes on it. Um, when you are buying into a syndication and you get some cash flow or money, you might not pay taxes on that depending on your situation because you get the depreciation from that asset. And with apartments, you get a ton of depreciation because it's based on the components of the building. So there are 
200 kitchens, 200 bathrooms, 200 toilets. It, you know, there's just so many components that you can depreciate that asset and get a huge um, loss. Now, it's not a true loss. It's a phantom right. loss. Mm -hmm. And that phantom loss offsets the money that's coming in. And so that way you don't have to pay taxes on that. Um, some people's situation. Now, again, I'm not a tax accountant or a CPA right. or attorney. Disclaimer, disclaimer. Um, <laughs> disclaimer. Um, but there's a lot of strategies where you're able to legally not pay taxes on that. Right. So this is one place where you want to have a loss or depreciation. It doesn't actually mean that your property is not worth anything. But depreciation is uh, something that allows you to take away from your W-2 income or for the gains that you might have made when you sold a property. Um, so that's not a bad thing because, you know, we hear depreciation or we hear loss and that's usually a turnoff, but not when it comes to investment as far as real estate is concerned. Right. All right. So, I mean, you have eight years of experience now with this and, you know, it's amazing how much you can learn very quick. Because when you start, talk to us about where you were eight years ago and maybe some of the fear of starting versus the comfort level that you have now. Oh my God, it's night and day. I mean, when I would hear the word depreciation, like <laughs> you would see my face like glaze over. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm reading textbooks for fun. <laughs> wow. <laughs> For light yeah, reading, I mean, right? Yeah. yeah. It's 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 unbelievable when you start thinking like I'm not just a doctor, let me just focus on this and you just kind of open your mind up to thinking about well, maybe I could learn this and and just take it bite size. It's all about learning it bite size. Start with a podcast, start with reading a blog, then read another blog, then read another podcast. I mean, you're stuck in traffic, you might as well be educating yourself. Um, and the more you learn, the more you hear pe of people doing it and you're like, Oh, this isn't rocket science. You know, there's, sure. there's, there's a specific outcome. There's a specific strategy. It makes sense. And you don't, you really don't have to be, um, I mean, you don't have to have like most of the people don't have degrees in real estate investing. It's not like in the medical field where we are educated and, and learning formal. how to do for, with formal education. This is all through a different type of education. Um, and I used to say, oh, my God, you know, what can you learn from a webinar, a seminar, a conference? Um, and I, I learned so much. It's, it's amazing. It's really amazing. Yeah. So you are not a formal coach, so to speak, but you do work with people who want to invest. So tell us about how people can work with you um, to learn more about investments or to even be a part of an investment property that you own. Yeah. So I, um, I find the properties and people, and I do all of the legwork and all of the work and people can come in and invest with me alongside me. I put my own money. I put my own time. And people can come in and invest alongside me. Um, and, and sometimes it, it makes them feel better. Like it's not as scary, right? When, when someone else is, that's been studying it, that's an expert in it, is, is looking at it. Um, so right. that's how you work with me. I'm not really coaching people on how to get into real estate. It's, it's I help you invest passively in apartments. Right. Um, so you do the me. active piece and the passive yes. piece is about them bringing assets or bringing money to invest in your right. into your property. So that's kind of confusing, active versus passive, because people right. think passive. Now, passive, you can just bring your money, but it doesn't mean that you don't have to do any work or any research. You still should be researching um, the properties that you're investing in. Right, okay. right. And if anybody's interested in, you know, talking to me more about this, um, or schedule a call with me, uh, calendly.com forward slash Shalwin Properties, S-H-A-L-W-I-N Properties. Um, and you can just directly contact me. I mean, this is something that you're very passionate about. You know, I was looking and I think I've counted you on about a dozen podcasts over <laughs> about the last four to six months. So 
thank you for taking that passion that you used to show as far as treating patients now to helping people empower themselves with the ability to invest. Uh, because, you know, there are scary times that we're going through now from a financial right. standpoint, but there's no signs that it's going to get better um, before, you know, it's going to get worse before it gets better again. That's right. Well, thank you so much for having me. I love this Money Mondays. And um, even though the technology didn't work, we still we still got the job done. <laughs> hey, we got the job done. So we're still going to get the message out to the people. Something didn't want us to get it out on the live, but we're still going to get it out. And, that's, that's important. and thank you for being a part of this. Yes. Thank you for having me. All right. Absolutely.